Greetings boys and girls, Chef Adam Graham here in the kitchen at Camp Lenora. As you can see, I'm surrounded by kale. All this kale came from the gardens here at uh, Lenora. We're gonna make some kale chips. Uh, first order of business is stripping the kale. Something like this. We don't use the stems in the kale chips, but we do save it for juicing. So we can really on the side there. Once again, I'll show you stemming the kale, very simple. This is red Russian kale. Just kind of grab it from the top, slide it down, and there you go. Kale is a wonderful healing food. It's anti-inflammatory. It's very high in vitamin K, which is important for blood clotting. I like my kale raw. Stemmed our kale, and here it is. There's a little more over there. We got a lot of kale here. What happens when you massage the kale is it wilts and shrinks down. First, we have to make our cashew cheese. This cashew cheese that we're gonna make is so delicious. Whatever doesn't go on the kale goes in your belly. It's win-win across the board. Eight cups, I'm not gonna pour all eight cups in here because uh, the vitamins would get very upset with me. Now we're also gonna be adding this, this lemon juice. We're gonna do half of this and half of the other four cups. This was three red bell peppers, I just seeded them. You can use orange bell pepper, you can use yellow bell pepper. I would not use the green bell pepper. Green bell peppers are actually unripe. The combination of the bell pepper, cashews, the yeast, and the lemon juice with the salt gives you a kind of a nacho cheese flavor, which is nice. A little bit of salt, and then you taste it because you know what they say, it's easier to add it than to take it out. So now we're gonna put in a quarter cup You could make the cheese in a food processor as well, but we want to make it really creamy and kind of chunky in the food processor. So here we go, helmets on, engage. I want to give you guys an update on the final measurements. We ended up using about three teaspoons of salt, which is actually one tablespoon. massaging portion. So as you're massaging, you're also gripping the kale. You want to make sure you wash your hands, of course. It's my feeling that a massaged kale salad is one of the favorite raw food dishes. So it's important that uh, when you're massaging the kale, that you do it with love. You don't want to have an angry kale salad. This is like a happy kale salad. And it almost looks like it's been blanched or steamed. Um, so you don't have to cook it to get this effect. All you have to do is salt it on the side. You don't have to be gentle either. The kale likes it rough. much cheese on the kale, what I do is I just add more of the unmassaged kale. You just coat it with the, the cheese, you rip it up, massage it a little bit, and then once you get it in the dehydrator, the dehydrator does the rest for you. One of the wonderful things about the dehydrator is it concentrates the flavor. So if it tastes good now, it's going to taste twice as good next once it's dry. Kale. Kale. Let's put it on some screens and we'll get dehydrated. Get it on. You can do this with your hands, of course. Oftentimes, when you're doing this with your hands, uh, your doorknobs and other different, your cell phone and other items uh, in the house get uh, coated with cheese as well, which is cool. You know. Let's say, hey, uh, 
You can't wait for your kale chips. Well, you can just take a big pile of this kale with the cheese on it and you can eat it as a salad. There's no rules or regulations saying that you can't do that. It's actually encouraged. Do what you want, as long as it tastes good and it's good for you and good for the planet. All right? All right. Typically, I set the dehydrator for kale chips around uh, 118 to 125. I know that folks out there are like, oh my gosh, 125, you're killing enzymes. Well, I prefer to kill a few enzymes as opposed to uh, raise bacteria and yeast and fungus on my food. What we're making right now is kale. We're making kale chips. 